All right, guys, with the with Cosmos getting more and more popular and the release of Venus coming soon, I wanted to make a video on farming strategies that you can take on Cosmos. Um, at first, the strategies are going to apply broadly to all yield farms, but Cosmos has a, a lot of different things implemented that are unique. And so after I get through with the general farming strategies, I'm going to see how um, you can use new strategies with Cosmos because of their new features. Now quickly, right before I get into that, I want to show you guys or tell you guys about the Cosmos team is running one giveaway per day through my Twitter account for 100 Mars and the entry requirements are very easy. They're going to be different requirements each day. Um, based around promoting the project and its unique features But the requirements are always very easy and they're gonna be on Twitter and I'm gonna have the links down in the description So just so you guys know you can get free Mars daily through these giveaways until the launch of Venus Which is the next big thing on cosmos So let's talk about yield farm strategies the way I'm going to lay this out is I'm going to start with the least risky options and then proceed to the riskier options. Then after that, I'm going to tell you guys about the unique strategies that you can use on Cosmos. So as we know, cryptocurrency is a volatile asset and DeFi yield farming is the newest Thing to come out of cryptocurrency and smart contracts so it's especially risky and especially volatile so I'm going to start off with the least risky ways that you can participate in DeFi projects and yield farming and proceed to the riskier ways okay so the least risky way to participate and to get your farming on is to go to the pools and farm something like BUSD. A, farming a stable coin is going to be the least risky. So you could put some BUSD, USDT, some DAI, some USDC into a pool. And you can get, let me zoom this in a little bit. And you can get 42% back APR. Now, since this is the least risky option, that's going to be your lowest APR, your lowest returns. There's always going to be a risk and reward factor. And the more risk you take, the more potential rewards you're going to get, but also the more potential that you'll lose. So least risky option, staking a single asset. That's a stable coin. What are your risks at that point? Now this is not specific to Cosmos. This is going to apply generally. Everything I'm going to tell you guys is going to apply generally. And then after I'm through with that, I'm going to tell you the unique features like boost, I feel lucky, the black holes, all of that, which is going to add even more strategy and options for you guys. So if you're in something like the BUSD or WBNB or any sort of stable coin single stake pool, whether it be Cosmos or PancakeSwap, your risks are basically vaporization of the platform. If you have single state going on, your only real risk is not being able to get your money back out. So basically what you're worried about is rug pulls, exploits. That's pretty much it. Now, Let's say you have a single stake or you have any kind, you're doing any sort of yield farming. Let's say the UI goes down or just things just stop working. What you want to look for to minimize your risk is make sure that you have a project that shows the, um, emergency withdrawal, emergency withdrawal, withdrawal, Sorry, I can't talk right now. You want to be able to withdraw your funds without the UI. So most people don't know how, and I can make a video on this specifically.
but you want to be able to call the contracts with code. So what you need to know is I forget the exact term, but it's basically like the ID for that farm. So you can you can call it and you can get your funds out. Now, one way you can do that is through VFAT. So if you go to vfat.tools, this is probably the easiest way, honestly. You go to the Binance Smart Chain and you go down to Cosmos. Cosmos is listed now. You can actually unstake, you can stake, you can do a lot of this stuff from VFAT. So if the UI ever goes down, you can mitigate your risk by knowing these other ways of moving your money. So now let's go on to another um, way of strategizing and yield farming that has a similar risk tolerance as what I just mentioned, which was the single stake pools. And that's going to be your double um, stablecoin farming pairs. That's going to be kind of your next level of risk. So like right here. Now we're in the farms. So now we're creating liquidity pool tokens. We're creating LPs. We're combining two tokens so that other people can swap between them easily. And the least risky ones are going to be things like USDT, BUSD. Two stable coins. Here's another two stable coins. DAI, BUSD. USDC, BUSD. So you can put your money in this in this protocol, keep them in stable coins, and get your Mars as a reward. So let's go to the next level of risk. We're going to go back to the pools, and now you're looking at single staking non um, stable coin pairs. So now the choice, now what your decision is, what coin do you think is going to perform the best? So if you have Ethereum, you can put your Ethereum. Now there's inherent risk in Ethereum. It could go up or down. It's not a stable coin. Same thing with your BTCB. Your dot, I'm not sure exactly how DOT works, to be honest with you guys. For all I know, it is a stable coin. I don't think it is. Um, or something like Cake or Link. Those are definitely not stable coins. So now we're looking at non-stable coin pairs. So now your risk factors are whatever risk factors you associate with cake or that token, plus the ones we already talked about, like rug pulls and just exploits, which could happen to anybody. Um, I seriously doubt that's going to happen with Cosmos because on the security side, um, you never know, but Cosmos doing everything they can to secure their protocol with the harvest lockups, etc. Deposit fees, having liquidity to provide. Um, and so on and so forth. So your other options are staking. So then on the next level of risk factor, now with all of these options, depending on what protocol you're in, you're going to be getting your rewards in that native token. So if you're on Cosmos, you're going to be getting Mars. If you're on Pancake, you're going to be getting Cake. If you're on Panther, you're going to be getting Panther. So no matter what you're doing, when you pick a protocol and you pick a place to farm, you're putting some of your risk into that native token because that's where your rewards are going to go. But if you're doing the stable coins or you're staking something like BNB, only your return is in that native token. So it's it's kind of not risk. It's more like your your rewards might be not worth as much. But your original investment, whether it be that stablecoin or BNB or Cake or Ethereum, again, is only going to be at risk with the things I already mentioned. So next levels of risk, you have... Things like you have farming pairs, LPs, of two non-native tokens. Non-stablecoin, non-native tokens. Like this one right here. This farm right here is Ethereum BNB. So now what are your risk factors on that? Well, you have Ethereum risk factor. What You don't know what's going to happen to Ethereum. You have a BNB risk factor. You don't know what's going to happen to BNB. 
you have the risk factors that we already talked about. And now, additionally, you have the impermanent loss risk factor. So when you have two tokens, I'm not going to explain impermanent loss too greatly because I have videos explaining every specific thing about impermanent loss and you guys can go check those out. It's on the channel. Just search impermanent loss on the channel. If you have Ethereum and BNB, those smart contracts are going to keep those at a 50-50 value pair. $100 of ETH, $100 of BNB. So when one of those assets goes up or the other asset goes down, it's going to buy or sell to keep the value equivalent between the two tokens. That's going to add a whole other risk factor. You don't have that risk factor in the single stake pools and you don't have that risk factor in stable coin farming pairs. Now the other risk factor in stable coins that I didn't talk about is is the stable coin actually stable? That's a whole nother video. It's actually a good video that I'll make. Are stable coins actually stable? That's a great topic. So our next level of risk factor would be joining a pool that is the native token. This one being Mars. In general, when you have a new DeFi project, the most risky option is to put your money in the native token. It's also going to support the ecosystem the most. It's also going to provide you with the most chance of reward. There's always the risk and reward factor. So you can come and you can stake single Mars. Now one of your strategies might be getting your you're having a, a low risk in the BUSD or the WBMB or a farming pair of two stable coins, getting your rewards in Mars and then staking your Mars and harvesting out of that and doing what you want with those, either cashing out or reinvesting them, compounding them, doing the lottery, etc. So when you're in the native token, there's generally that's the most amount of risk in yield farming projects. Now there's one more, there's even, there's another way you can risk even more. And again, you can see that what I'm telling you, the increase in risk is directly reflected in the APR that you're going to be receiving. So the order that I'm giving you these strategies in, you can see the APR is increasing. Now with Mars, there's the boost feature, which I'm going to get into after the general application of farming strategies, which takes us to a whole new level. And that's specific to Cosmos. So we have farming pairs that have the native token. We have Mars BNB, Mars BUSD, and that's what we have on Cosmos. So these are going to have basically a combination of all the risk factors that I just told you about. There's the exploit, the rug pull, the impermanent loss, and the inherent risk in a, na in a native token on a new project. So you have all those things combined. That's what these farms are going to have for you. Because of that, you're going to have the highest APRs on these pools. It's meaning you're going to have the highest rate of return. Those are basically your strategies when it comes to general farming. There's some things that I missed, of course. Um, but that's, that's your general game plan when it comes to yield farming. So now let me tell you about how Cosmos adds to these strategies and how their unique features um, can help you guys out. What can you do on Mars? So let's say you're on one of the least lesser risky options. You have BUSD here. So you're just staking single BUSD. That's a stable coin created by Binance. And you're getting your 42% APR. But that's not enough APR for you. You didn't want to take a high risk, so you're not getting that high of a return. What you can do is use the boost feature to increase the APR. 
if you hit boost, you will burn your harvest. So this three Mars that I can harvest right now, I can boost by burning these three harvest these three Mars and increasing the APR 25%. So you can take this and you can make your less risky pools perform better. You can even make your risky pools like your Mars BNB. Like you can see here, this one is uh, one thing I forgot to mention is you have your you have farming pairs that are um, a native token or even something like Bitcoin or Ethereum, a non stable coin and a stable coin pair. Now, there's there's going to be a lot of debate between non-stable coin stable coin pairs and just a completely non-stable coin pair like you have mars bnb versus mars busd a lot of people think that mars busd has less risk i don't really think that way they're they're talking about impermanent loss at that point they're saying that the the, the stable coin and non-stable coin pair is going to have less permanent risk impermanent loss I actually think it's completely the opposite. You have the potential for less impermanent loss. When you have something like Mars BNB paired, you have the potential for the maximum amount of impermanent loss. One of those assets goes up and one of them goes down. That's your worst possible scenario when it comes to impermanent loss. When you have a stable coin, only one of those assets can go up or down. So you can't get the maximum amount, although you still can. If one of those assets goes all the way to the ground, you're out the game. But what people don't consider when it comes to things like Mars BNB, non-stable coin pairs, is the crypto market. If the crypto market goes, if, it, if the whole thing is going up or the whole thing is going down, if those two things are acting in unison and their ratio stays the same, then you you're not facing impermanent loss. I actually think you have a higher chance of impermanent loss on a stable coin non stable coin pair. That's my opinion. Other people are going to have different opinions on that. I just wanted to add that. I just thought of it. So let's get back to Cosmos's unique strategies because of the um, gamification features that they have on the on the um, protocol. You can take these risk factors. You can increase your reward per risk ratio by using boost now the consequence of that is burning your harvest and your boost is going to last forever so you can continue to boost your pool so that's a strategy that you want to think about obviously if you're going to use that strategy you want to start boosting early right when you get your pools you want to boost them up because when you look at this and you see oh, you're getting 112 APR, well, I have a 900% boost. So I have a lot more than 112 APR. Now, I had to burn my Mars multiple times to get that boost. So I contributed to the system by burning, but now I have that 900% APR increase. And anybody can do this on Mars. Anybody can boost, and anyone can feel lucky. What other strategies... And unique things does Mars employ well they have the black holes and there's gonna be more black holes coming in the future but right now we have two already the projects only been out for like three weeks we already have a lottery implemented and we have two new black holes and tons of farms that have been implemented what is a black hole a black hole is a new strategy where you can take LPs from other places like mars i mean sorry like panther or ape swap currently and you can actually stake them on cosmos and use your boost feature on them so you can actually now you can use your boost on other lps by bringing them over to mars which is pretty sweet so if you're staking your panther um your panther busd or your panther bmb over on panther swap and you're only getting so much APR, you can bring them to Cosmos and boost that pool and get a higher APR than you would at Panther Swap or on Ape Swap. 
So those are the general investing strategies that you can employ. Um, a lot of that is going to apply to any farm. But with Cosmos, the way that they're creating new features, they are increasing your strategy potential and increasing your rewards. So I want you guys to think about that. I want you to consider Cosmos. I appreciate everybody and the team for what they're doing. The links to everything is going to be in the description. I got an impermanent loss video. I have the giveaways that are going on. So if you want to get your foot in the door on Cosmos, you don't have any money to invest. I'm going to be running a giveaway every single day for until Venus comes out, which is going to be about a week to two weeks. And they're very easy to join. So you can get your foot in the door. You can use that Mars to boost some pools. And if you have Panther or Ape Swap, you can get your pools boosted and get that money over there. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you guys learned something with this video. And I will be seeing you guys later.